If we're really honest, the main reason that most people find themselves knocking on my door or contacting me by email or calling me about counseling, the main reason that people come to me, the main reason really, if we're honest, that you're on uh, the computer right now looking for someone to give you some insight or to give you some life direction, the main reason is because there's pain of some sort or another. Maybe it's the pain of feeling your career isn't going the way you want it to go. Maybe it's the pain of some relationship totally blowing up in your face or totally falling apart. Maybe it's the pain of just all this anxiety inside. I have plenty of clients who have everything they want or so much what they want out here in the world, outside of them. They have the perfect house, the perfect car, the perfect job, the perfect wife, the perfect kids, the perfect husband, or just really good in all of those areas, even if it's not perfect. And yet their pain is inside. That no matter what I have outside, it doesn't fill that hole inside. It doesn't make me feel fulfilled and satisfied and alive and happy. And so the reason most people come to me is fundamentally they're in some form of pain. I mean, think about it. If you're reaching out to someone, that means it's reached such a level inside of you. It's reached such a level in your relationships or in your career. It's reached such a level that you can't handle it anymore and that you need help. So you find yourself either looking online or looking through um, the ads for a therapist or a coach or something along those lines, somebody that can take you from where you are to where you really think your life should be, where you want to be. But what's really interesting is that that's not the worst part. The worst part isn't just the pain or the fear or the anxiety or the unease you're feeling inside of yourself. That's not the worst part. The worst part is also finding someone that you believe can actually solve your problem, can actually take you where you want to go. And that's not easy because what we're always looking for in every human interaction, the very first thing we're looking for, whether we're aware of it or not, is can I trust this person? Do I respect this person? Those two questions we're always seeking to answer, trust and respect. Trust, do they have a believable character about them? Do they have an energy that portrays truth, that portrays honesty, that portrays this is someone I can trust my life problems to? That's the first thing. And the second thing is, do I respect them? And not just who they are or what their resume is. You may have looked me up online already on Wikipedia, or you may have looked up you know, my articles or my books, or you may have read testimonials by previous clients, you know, over 25 years of doing this stuff. But it's not just respecting what they've done. It's respecting that they have the ability to do what I need them to do. That, they, that this person, whether it's Sven, me, or someone else, that this person has the ability to take me from the pain that I am in to the success I want, or the pain that I am in, to a state of no pain, to a state of relief, or a state of inner peace, that I've tried everything and I've been frantically, anxiously running my whole life, running away from it, it being my problems and the pain, and also trying to run to it, the very success that I want. And so what we're assessing is, in, in respect, is do I respect that this person has the capacity? Do I respect this person's capacity and their ability to solve my problem? Can I trust myself to them? Can I trust my problems to this person? And do I respect they have the ability to take me where I want to go? And assessing that is not always easy. And too often we get into therapy uh, with someone. And I've had therapists in the past, and I'll be very honest, to very little success. I always felt like I was going faster than them. Or I always felt like they were asking the wrong questions. Or I always felt like after six or eight or ten sessions, when they finally have gotten to know me, I always find myself... God, is, is this all you got? Oftentimes it's like they're reading out of a book or, or they're just relaying to me what they've learned in a book or they learned in college or in graduate school or in, you know, in their doctoral work or whatever. And I feel like it's canned. And so I don't respect them and I don't respect their ability to help me. And so as a result, I don't want to trust even more of my life and my money to them. Um, and so this sets up really the worst problem. If the first thing is the pain itself that you're experiencing inside your life or in your uh, exterior life, your relationships and career and so forth, if that's really the, the big part, the other two big parts or even bigger parts are A, finding someone who has the ability to solve it. I mean, that how do you know? 
I mean, to some degree, you can go on reputation, you can go on background, you can go on referrals, and you go on instinct. And so you sort of take the leap, right? And you try. And so that's the second piece, finding someone that you actually believe has the capacity to lead you where you want to go. But there's a third thing that's almost more insidious. And that is, if you've been in your pain long enough, and if you've gone down enough avenues to try to solve the pain, only to discover that they're not avenues, they're cul-de-sacs, they're dead ends. If you've had enough therapists, if you've had enough coaches, if you've tried all the different self-helps, you find yourself lacking belief that anything can even work. And so you don't jump into it with the same robustness that you have in the past. You don't go two feet in. Instead, you go one foot in. There's an old saying, we only enjoy something to the degree we're in it. Well, the same can be true of, can be said to be true of counseling or self-help or self-paced self-help, as I do here on my website. Um, for those who maybe can't afford counseling with me or who prefer to just do it on their own, uh, whether it's on the, through the courses on my website or whether it's uh, by using my books, um, especially my latest book, There's a Hole in My Love Cup. Um, so many of them have been down so many cul-de-sacs. So many of them have tried different therapists and different avenues and different self-help uh, paths that they've reached the point where I don't even really believe that something can work. I've lost hope. And so that's even worse. It's not just that I have the pain and it's not just that I also have to find somebody that I can believe in, but it's that I have to believe that it's even possible anymore. You know, it's like after you've had your heart broken enough times and you find yourself wondering, holy shit, is, is love even possible? You know, I, you, you get your heart broken, you get hurt, and so on and so forth, and you begin to lose hope, or you just age. Do you know how many clients I've had over the years in their 50s, their 60s, especially in those years, but even their 70s, or some even in their 40s. I had clients in their 40s. And they say, you know, Sven, I've had my heart broken, and I'm getting so old, I don't even know if it's possible anymore. And you know, the, the pool of candidates shrinks, Sven, so I, you know... I, I, I just, when I find one that's in the ballpark, I kind of got to hold on tightly. And of course, the problem with that is then you're clinging to someone because you're afraid you'll never get someone better. Or you're afraid you'll never have a better relationship. And so you hold on tightly. You start playing tight. In sports, we talk about playing tight versus playing loose. When you step up to the plate to play or onto the court or onto the rink or onto the field, if you're playing tight, if you're playing afraid of losing, if you're playing tight, you're going to make mistakes. There are plenty of players who's Careers have been ruined because of the fact that they were playing tight. But when you're playing loose, when you're just swinging away, you're just swinging away, you're loose, and you're not even really thinking about it, that's when the big things happen. That's when the good things happen, the great things happen. Well, it's the same way in relationships. If you're holding on to someone and you're tight, then you're living afraid, right? And then you're contorting yourself and bending yourself and withholding information. You're doing anything just to make sure this person stays. Just stay, just stay. Don't leave me, don't leave me, right? And that's no way to be in a relationship because that's when we sacrifice, start sacrificing more and more of ourselves. That's when we start becoming someone other than who we really are. We become whoever I got to be on the surface. We, gotta, we become whoever I got to be to make sure this person stays because we're frantic. We're afraid, right? Living in that fear of losing someone. Living in that fear of not believing, not trusting that happiness will come. That happiness can come. But it means letting go of that which doesn't work. Well, it's the same way with going into therapy or going into coaching. And I've counseled literally thousands and thousands of people over the last 25 years. As a therapist, as a spiritual counselor, as a pastor, as an emergency room chaplain, it, as a friend, and even my own self. I did all this stuff that I, I talk about on my site and in my books and in my learning courses, all of this because I did it initially on myself. Everything that I suggest, I know works because I've used it on myself and I've used it on others. And so I know, I guess what I'm saying is I know that it's hard to believe that help is possible. Not just help, but aliveness. And the goals that you want and, and, and the feeling 
that you want inside. All those things you acquired, the money and the cars and the houses and the vacations and the dinners out and, and the girlfriend or the boyfriend, all those things were acquired to try to make you feel something inside. And very often you haven't felt it, right? You're, you're on this site right now, probably because you're not feeling it when you should be feeling it or you want to be feeling it. And my job is to get you there. And I'm telling you what I do is I get you there. And I know it's hard to believe. If you've been down the road many times, it's hard to believe that hope is possible. It's hard to believe that you can actually be happy again. And you've tried so many in the past and they haven't worked. And I guess all I can tell you is I know for absolute fact I know for absolute fact, fact, that I can get you where you want to go. If you are open to the process and if you trust that I know what I'm doing and that I've done this before, I know that I can get you there. And so I guess what I'm saying is, A, I know your pain. I've lived it in my own life for a very long time, 15 years. I went through really heavy stuff and I was in hard places and I had to learn how to heal myself because I wasn't getting the healing from other sources that I wanted. So A, I know your pain. B, I believe that I am the person you can trust and that I am the person you can respect. And at some point you have to take the leap. You have to believe it too, whether on instinct or based on you know, my reputation and what I've done in the past or what you've read, at some point you have to believe too. And then the last piece is hope is possible and results are possible and that I can get you where you need to go, that it just requires trying again. It requires opening up, opening up and giving yourself to a process and stepping in and saying yes and, and doing the work. And the work is really having the courage, having the solitude. My overall process is fundamentally three things. The spiritual process, I call the spiritual process, and I'm not talking about God stuff. I'm talking about you communing, you interacting with your own spirit, your own true self. It's about me helping you build a relationship with your own true self. And the spiritual process is fundamentally three things. One, it's having the solitude and the room inside your head is pushing back all those other voices that have been telling you your whole life what you should do or how you should live or who you should be. And it's being able to hear and feel your own voice. Your fundamental problem is that you've been taught to distrust your own voice. You've been taught that you have to listen to all the other voices. You've spent your life pleasing all those other voices and you can't hear your own voice. So the first step is to create the solitude necessary to hear your own voice, to feel your own truth, your own true self rising up from inside your soul. But it's blocked with so much crud. It's blocked with so many people's voices inside your head and so many obligations and the voice of society or the voice of your best friend or the voice of your parents or the voice of your brother or the voice of your boss. All those voices tumbling around in your head, right? I mean, isn't that what it really is? That you spend so much of your time, what is it? Drinking? Xanax? Drugs? Gambling? Overworking? Overparenting? Overexercising? Cheating. That was my drug for years. And I've written a book on it. On what I learned from my path down that sort of hellhole of cheating again and again and again with married women. So we run from it because we're so consumed by the voices. Or maybe your escape is some sort of eating disorder. You eat and eat and eat for three hours, and then you binge or purge and purge and purge for three hours. And during those six hours, for once, your mind is turned off, right? You can't hear all those voices and all those obligations and all those balls you have to keep in the air, right? The challenge to hearing your own voice is having the, the courage to push back all the other ones. Having the courage to pull away all the fears and all the anxieties. And that's what I do in my work, is I help you do that. You cannot achieve the excellence and the greatness you want until you have the courage to heal your soul. And I'm not, again, I'm not talking in religious terms of soul. I'm just talking in terms of, that's the best word I can come up with for who you really are deep inside of you. And I believe it is in there, but it gets cluttered and packed with so much crud over the years. People and their obligations and their messages to you of who you are or who you aren't or how you're crap or how you're not good enough 
or how you don't deserve to be happy or to be your real self. So the first task is to create solitude in your own head and in your own life so that you can hear your own voice rising up. The first task in this spiritual journey is to hear your own voice because you've been taught to not hear it or to distrust it or to doubt your own voice. That's the problem. The second piece then, if the first piece is hearing your own voice, the second piece is having the courage. If the first one is the solitude to hear your voice, the second one is the courage to heed your own voice. Some people get stuck on just running, 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 running from their own voice, running from the truth of their own feelings and how unhappy they are. But other people get stuck on this second step of, no, I know what my voice is saying. So I can hear my own voice. I know what I want. I know what direction I, I, I want to go. But I just can't keep, seem to get motivated. I can't seem to sustain the effort. And the reason for that is either A, what you say you want isn't what you want, or more likely B, you're terrified at the cost of what you want. You're terrified. You're terrified to actually be, say, do, and become. What you know you want to be, say, do, and become. You're terrified of the voices of others. You don't have the courage yet, and it requires the courage. You got to hear your voice, but then you have to have the courage to heed your voice. You have to have the courage to take those steps. And I have uh, steps, exercises, processes, insights in my books and in my learning courses online that help you find the courage, that help you remove the blockages, that straighten up your spine and stick out your chest and pin your ears back and you're ready to go. But the second step is courage. The first step is the solitude to hear your own voice, to clear out the other voice. The second one is having the courage to heed your own voice, to go 100 miles an hour with your hair on fire, trusting, knowing that you're going in the direction of your greatest passion. And then the third step, and this is a challenge for other people, the third step, and it's sort of a master level step, the third step is letting go of trying to control the results. See, we, we have a vision, we hear our own voice rising up from within, and then we take the steps necessary and we implement the life and we begin to live on the outside who we are on the inside. We begin to express who we really are and put it into place. We begin to create an integrated life that who I am on the outside is reflective of who I am on the inside. Right? I mean, the unrest, the depression, the anxiety you feel is because who everyone else wants you to be is forcing its way down your throat. And it's meeting about midway or a little further, or a little higher. It's meeting your, the desire of your own soul, who you really are trying to come up. And where those two meet, that's the tension. That's the grating, the rubbing. That's the anxiety. That's the depression. And the further those voices are able to squash down your own voice, the more it's down here in your pit of your gut and you have depression, you have sorrow and you have misery and you begin to manifest physical problems as well, right? Ulcers and, and cancers and so on and so forth. Am I saying all of those diseases are, are caused by internal stuff? No, of course not. But I'm saying it sure adds to it. It weakens our immune system to have this massive internal struggle going on in our soul and in our, who we are. But that third step then is once you've begun doing that, once you've begun manifesting and, and creating on the outside who you really are on the inside, rather than trying to change who you are on the inside to fit what everyone on the outside wants you to be. Once you start doing that, it's easy to lock in on one vision and that it has to be this. It has to be X, Y, or Z. And what we find is that the more we release the pain, the more we have the courage to be authentic, the more we have the capacity to trust in the flow of life, what we find is that it morphs into things greater than what we ever anticipated. We so want to conduct the whole orchestra, but it's like the universe or it's like your own soul is saying, no, just play the freaking cello. All right, just, just play the cello of your life. Don't feel like you got to conduct the orchestra because you can't. And so many things happen. And invariably, as in without exception, the more you have the courage to trust and to follow your instincts, rather than, you know, you have a vision for your life of going in this direction, but it's terrifying, right? And so we go tick, 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 I'm gonna go this direction because it's not quite as scary, right? We water it down, rather than trusting that I'll be okay, that no matter what happens, I'll be okay, rather than choosing trust, we choose fear. And we go tick, 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 and we take a safer route, or we go tick, 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 and we go the exact opposite direction because it's just safer, it's, it's safer, all right? 
But even if we're going 100 miles an hour with our hair on fire in the direction of our greatest dreams and our highest aspirations, and we're becoming more and more um, unencumbered by fear, it becomes very easy to cling to what our original vision was rather than trusting the flow of life. And what I've discovered working in my own life as well as in the lives of clients is that the more we just stay open to life, the more things happen that'll blow your freaking mind. I mean, really, stuff starts to fall out of the sky. Stuff you can't imagine right now. And the vision changes and all of a sudden you find yourself in a place that you didn't even imagine and it's even better than what you did imagine. So the three steps of the spiritual process of having full communion with your own truest self. Is one, having the solitude to hear the voice. Two, having the courage to heed the voice. And three, letting go of trying to control the results. You know, we've all been in situations where we're trying to force something. I have a friend who's a professional gambler, client actually. And he says, man, I know there are times when I'm at the table where I'm forcing it. And it's just like, I, I just, I want it. I got to make it happen. I got to make it happen. And it never happens, man. He says, and then there are those other times where I'm at the table and it's just flowing and I know I'm in flow and I'm not having to force it and I'm just trusting the process. Well, the same can be true. I've coached Olympic athletes, I've coached pro athletes, professional musicians, artists, you know, CEOs, Wall Street is, uh, you know, a big percentage of my clientele. It's the same sort of thing when they're forcing a deal. If you're in sales, if you're forcing a deal, you're pushing too hard because you have this vision of what it should be rather than trusting the flow. And there are times, and that means when you're taking action, it's inspired action means when you're taking action, it's because it feels right rather than, no, I gotta make it happen. I just gotta make it happen, right? And so part of living this spiritual life is trusting the flow, trusting that when it's time to act, intuition, your own intuition, your own soul will speak. And my job is to help you clear away all the clutter, to heal your soul, to pull out all the crud, all the fear, all the pain. And we can do that very, very quickly. And I have exercises for helping you do that and so forth. Clear away all the clutter so that you can hear your own calling of your own voice. And then the second aspect of it is to have the courage to pursue your excellence. Now that you've heard your calling, now that you've heard your own voice and it's speaking to you and it's, it's resonating inside of you. Like when you hit the key on a piano and that string inside the piano resonates. It's the same way we know when we've hit our truth. It just resonates. It just feels right. When we do that, and if you trust the processes that I've put in place and what I've put on this website, when you do that, when you hear the voice and have the courage to heed the voice and go in the direction of your dreams and let go of trying to always control the results, things will begin to happen that you can't even begin to imagine right now. And so what I'm saying is I can get you where you want to go. I can get you there and I can get you there somewhat quickly. I'm asking you to trust and believe that it is possible. Happiness actually is possible, and not just happiness, but peace inside, fulfillment inside, a sense above all else of aliveness. That for the first time in my life, I don't feel dead. I don't feel like life is sitting its fat ass right on my head, where I don't feel like I'm carrying a 500 pound bag of rocks on my back, where I don't feel like I can barely scrape myself up off the couch, where I feel like the beast inside of me, to quote one of my clients, that the beast inside of me has been unleashed. And I'm actually excited. And that doesn't mean there aren't fears and there aren't obstacles and there aren't challenges, but that's part of the exhilaration, right? I mean, think about it. You don't go to the amusement park to ride the roller coaster up, to go tick, 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 riding that roller coaster up. No, no. The excitement of life, the excitement of the roller coaster is the down. It's the twists and the loops and the turns. And so what I'm saying is I can take you where you want to go. I'm here to help you. All of my courses, my books, my counseling, if you choose that, is intended to get you from the pain that you're in, in the box here with somebody who can take you where you want to go and then to get you where you want to go, to help you believe that there is hope again and to actually take you to that state of true and genuine and lasting aliveness. That sense of fulfillment in life, the sense that I'm finally in flow, I'm finally doing what I love to do, being who I really am. The goal is to help you be, say, do, and become, and have that which breathes life into your soul, to become who you really are, to draw it up from within and to begin to manifest it outside you. That's what I do. I can get you where you want to go, and I hope that you'll take the leap and get in and do the work and keep opening up and let me change your life. Thanks so much for taking time to watch this video. I hope you have a kick-ass day.